I want to ask you guys at the moment, um, in today's climate, what are the creative elements that are going to get you interested and going to get other financiers interested in your project? Is it, are we talking about talent? Are we talking about the scripts? Is it a concept? Is it a particular genre? There are lots of, uh, genre, I'm always hearing about genre films these days, low budget British genre films, um, a boom in those it would seem. So it'd be interesting to get everyone's perspective on what is working at the moment and what do you look for creatively when a project comes to you more than anything else? So I think if someone comes to us with a, something that's a more art house type film then it's about the director for us uh, and that obviously would help if it's a, a very established art house director but uh, you know obviously maybe sometimes you're up and coming producer you're not going to be able to you know, get Ken Loach or Mike Lee so uh, in that instance I guess it's about looking at uh, even if it's a first timer that can still be exciting we've done first time filmmakers uh, and I, I guess in that art house here, we're looking to see what shorts they've done, whether those shorts have uh, won at festivals, won awards. Uh, you know, they might have the kind of support of a you know, something like Film Four, the BFI might have developed something with them, and that kind of stamp of approval. Will, as a sales company, will get us excited because if it's an art house film, our the way we're going to be able to sell that film is by it being a very creatively strong project by getting into a major festival. And, and selling there. If you if you, you can almost look at the filmmaker at quite an early stage and kind of make that call whether you think that film is going to be able to get those kind of reviews and get those kind of festival. I mean, it's that becomes far more of a sort of judgment call. But you know, we all look at a lot of that material, so we're reasonably experienced in making those calls. If it's slightly more commercial, uh, then you know, I suppose there's a lot of as you say lower budget genre type films. So yeah, it's about having a really clever idea but also having an idea that can then be made at a budget that suits that idea and suits the talent involved. You know, if someone comes to us, because we do this a lot uh, and we get a lot of material, someone comes to us and says, I've got this idea and you know, maybe it's an inexperienced producer and it's an inexperienced director and they say they're gonna make it for five million pounds. It's like, well, it's never gonna happen, really. So, you know, we can quickly, in a way, just sort of slightly discount that. So therefore, but if someone comes to us with an original idea, and maybe it's an up and coming director or someone who's done a couple of things, but the budget seems achievable, not only to finance, but also to deliver those kind of elements. Because that's another thing, you know, we can, you know, sometimes people, you send a script and it reads fantastic, you think, how are they gonna make that? It, mm. might, it might cost five million pounds. Uh, and then I think the, the third area, I suppose, if you're going into slightly bigger films, it does start becoming a little bit about the cast. Chris, are you seeing trends? at the moment in the projects that are coming to you? Uh, I think there's always a sort of um, a steady stream of certain kinds of films which, which come um, and certain kinds of directors who come up in particular ways. Um, so, you know, we do tend to see, you know, pretty much everything that's out there. Um, I'd say that, that, you know, people are wanting to make comedy. I'd say that people are interested in genre films and, you know, genre is a really interesting area that is fraught with difficulties, let's mm. say, because it's, it's very easy to fail in that area. Um, although I have to say, you know, we are you know, not afraid of taking risk, and we are in a position where we can take a lot of risk and help people who maybe are doing something slightly different. Mm. Um, and we've had some success. I mean, recently, the, you know, Rory Robinson's um, sci-fi movie, Last Days on Mars, played in Cannes, um, you know, and I think it's a really you know, quite spectacular <coughs> Um, demonstration of what you can do on a relatively low budget um, mm. I was almost sort of counter programming to sort of American studio kind of work in mm. some ways um, so you know we'll keep trying to do that and when people come in with those kind of ideas you know we'll definitely interrogate them um, you know, people think of genre you know when you say genre I just I think in the back of my office go horror or they go yep. they just sort of go to the sort of bit in there's a lot of really clever horror but actually I think for us as a sales company, when it says genre, that could be sci-fi, that could be action, that could be thriller. It's just something that's kind of very <coughs> marketable and has a sort of hook to it. Mm. And I think that doesn't you know, mean you have to do something stupid in there. You can be really smart. That film you were talking about last day is Mars, an intelligent person. We did a film called Moon, yeah, exactly. which is very smart and yeah. worked really well. And that's, you know, I mean, it over-delivered as a film, quite honestly. Yeah. But uh, that's a good bit. We, there was a market for that. And we really mm -hmm. found that the buyers were quite excited by having a film in that, that mm. genre. What's, no, what's over-delivery, uh, Andrew? Uh, 
It's better than expected. It's better than expected. Over delivered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're, but you're right. I mean, Moon's the gold standard on yeah. that. And actually, what is interesting, I do think there's a new generation of, of filmmakers coming up who have genre in their DNA. They've, they've grown up watching those movies. Yeah. They want to make those movies. Mm -hmm. And actually, they understand how to make them at relatively low budgets. Mm -hmm. And Moon's a perfect example of that. And that works in, in, a, in a range of genres. Horror is a really interesting one because we haven't really cracked horror. You know, there's very few British directors who have made effective horror movies um, so far, you know, and actually we get very little material that's strong enough to take a risk on. Um, you know, and I think we still have a little bit of a problem in terms of our directors. The best directors often want to make the most niche work. So getting really strong directors who want to work in broad areas is, is a challenge. Yeah, what would you say? Well, Ultimately, we are an end user, so whatever we develop or produce within Film 4 has to play well on the channel. So for that reason, we tend to look for stuff that subverts the genre. We're looking for stuff that pushes boundaries, is, is slightly um, innovative, groundbreaking. Um, it, it starts with story. Um, we're quite often on board early enough that it, it's not about the talent as much. Or it's Rather, it's about the, the writer, the director. But we, we don't even necessarily require a director to be attached to a project. Um, Before production, before you're you willing to take a, uh, we take sometimes a have ideas. You know, people just come in with an idea or a newspaper article that they want to option. It, it, it can be the sort of barest kernel of an idea. It doesn't have to be a fleshed out script. You know, they come to us for script financing. So, as, as long as the idea is is slightly original, and as long as ultimately it's it's something which we think as a film would play well on Channel Four. Mm -hmm. Okay, is actually do quite a lot of hands-on development work. So taking projects from various stages and it can be an idea, it can be a first draft, you know, we look to we'll take things from any stage and then actually try to help people make that as good as it can be. And that can sometimes take a long time. I mean we've just backed a film under the skin, Jonathan Glazer's <laughs> film, which is an amazing film. Just backed it. Yeah. <laughs> But you know well, that's just back to, as in just made it. Sorry, it's been yeah. in development I mean, yeah. for thirteen years. I'm told it is actually finished now. I'm, I'm hoping it is. Um, <laughs> you know, and we'll see it soon. But that's been thirteen years. Thirteen years, 13 years from inception to to finally getting out there. You know, and it's so, so, so sometimes it's a very very long journey. Yeah. Um, but and that's a kind of classic example where Jonathan is an out, Jonathan Glazer, the director, is an outstanding talent. Who you know you just go along that journey with, you know, how long, how, how long it takes, because it's, you know, it's going to be worth it. Yeah. Tarkin, I guess you will accept projects <coughs> at any stage. Exactly. So as a, as a crowdfunding platform, we're open to any project, um, any genre. What we kind of look for for successful film funding is making sure the kind of rewards are really kind of innovative and as creative as they can be, trying to kind of utilise exactly what the actual films are going to be about. So the example I used earlier, where somebody offered for £2,000 an opportunity to kind of go, and go cage diving with sharks. The actual documentary being produced at the time, um, so it's actually quite an interesting story there. Um, the guy went originally to various uh, film funds, I'm not sure if it was BFI, mm -hmm. but he went to various film funds and they said they weren't interested. So he came to us and as community manager, we kind of sat him down, understood exactly how much money he needs, which he kind of kind of nailed originally, but actually worked with him to kind of come up with some rewards which will actually entice people to actually give money towards his production. And what's really interesting here is he was the first example of someone where after he raised about eight or nine thousand pounds, went back to the grant givers and actually said, look, there is a demand for this. You can see people want it. Can you put some money in? And they actually put in a, th a few thousand pounds then. And then they carried on and you know, that really had the kind of momentum. And then he kind of got his target, I think it was just under 20,000. But importantly, he had some very good rewards. So he had the kind of basic, as I said earlier, the Twitter shout outs, he had shark tooth necklaces, something very kind of um, related to that product. The other extreme of that was a lottery ticket reward, which we always say is great for PR, working with the uh, community managers, somebody who can actually work, in that case, with the director and producer to actually try and market it out to the right people, right social media, right papers, to actually try and generate a buzz. So what we came up with was, he's at the end of it filming a documentary about sharks, he's got access to sharks, if that's what you like. So he said, look, if you offer this kind of creative reward, we weren't expecting really for anyone to actually put in the money, it was more of a kind of PR, get his name out there, etc. But what someone did was put in £2,000 to go cage diving while on shoot, 
with that um, producer. So that was a great way where, <clears throat> based upon the actual film, the specific reward came out of that. And his original kind of gift rewards when he came to us was very much, um, I can offer them a poster, postcard, and a handwritten thank you note. So what we kind of look for, whatever the genre of the film, however you define genre, whatever, whatever you come with us for, is actually try and get the community involved. At the end of it, it is crowdfunding. They want to be a part of that journey, whether it's as part of an extra, part of the actual shoot, or indeed just part of the kind of credits towards the end. And that can, sorry, and that can apply whether you are looking for money for you know, script development or indeed to actually go into production. So it may be the producers can't, producers got a kind of personal story which they like to share on the video in the description and therefore people kind of go on board, not because they like sharks, but do you know what, they, you know, they want to take a risk in this guy, they like his attitude, they like what he's trying to achieve, the kind of impact he's trying to make, mm -hmm. to try and get people who want to support the guy or the person doing the project. Similarly, what we also say is crowdfunding is try and entice the crowd, as you, as you say, and actually you know, appeal to people who want just a reward. So in the case of the shark, which is, I think, a great example, I'm not really too keen on sharks myself. I am not really don't really know the guy who was actually um, trying to do the shoot. But what I did like was the actual pledge rewards. And for £100, getting a shark necklace, or a necklace with a shark tooth on it, actually was quite appealing, quite unique for me. So there we try and say, appeal to someone who just wants the rewards. And by breaking it down, you can actually entice businesses to actually come on board by giving them advertising space in programmes, giving them advertising pay, uh, space at the premiere, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's trying to actually widen the appeal, whether you're trying to go after grants, individuals, friends and family, or people who just you know, really want to support that genre or actually have an impact in that genre. And I think this is a really important thing about people starting out making films. You must know that there is an audience for your film. I mean, why make a film if it's going to be hidden? And it's... That, it, that is such an important thing and um, it's the thing I question myself always is, is who is going to watch this, is this, is this really uh, just a vanity project for ourselves or, or is it, has it really got, is it, you know, am I convinced that there is an audience out there and uh, I, I, I think of myself as, as the first audience really for for, uh, even at script stage, would I like to see this? Mm. Do I want to go to the movies to see this idea? And that is the fundamental importance mm. for me of, of a project. As it's a sales company, we probably can see or get invited to see at least a film a week that's been made without a sales agent, without a distributor, and someone just raised the money themselves or any kind of alternative way. Uh, it's a lot of films, and, and I'd say, now we as a sales company, we've picked up a couple of sort of finished films. You know, so it sometimes does work, but I say a lot of them, you just watch them and go, no one will ever see that film. You know, that won't get into a festival, that won't really do beyond it. And that's where, and we're, we have all made films that haven't quite worked, but these are films I think where you go, actually there is fundamentally probably no audience for this even to start off with. It's not just a bad film, it's actually like, who is ever gonna go and see that film? And I think, I think it is great if you can't pull together the money privately or through, crowdsourcing or you know not having to engage with the more traditional way because that can be quite a long and, and, and difficult process but I the think crowdsourcing, the crowds yeah, crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing actually sort of already speaks proves, to that yeah. because it crowdsourcing tells you who if there is an audience yeah. at all um, but <coughs> the, 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 the downside <coughs> of crowdsourcing is that you can't I, I mean it, it, unless you've got an absolutely supersonic idea you, it's very difficult to raise enough money to to make to reach the higher production values that you need to get to make a project that will will hit the mainstream cinema. So I think it's a really useful addition to the ways of funding films. And I'm thinking that <coughs> I have a project at the moment which I think would be ideal for crowdfunding, which is not to make a film. But to make, um, like we, we did this documentary in the, um, uh, in the spring, or that came out in the spring called The Spirit of 45. And it's a, a, a sort of a very passionate uh, personal project of Ken Loach's about uh, that moment um, immediately after the Second World War when uh, we elected the only socialist government that this country has ever seen. 
and introduced the national health and nationalised industries and all the rest of it. Anyway, we did a lot. We did a big digital project alongside the BFI and Film Four for it, and we developed a lot of extra materials around the project. And uh, one of the things we're really interested in in doing is to 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 make sense of all that material beyond the digital project is to come up with a um, an iPad application, a or an iTunes application that you can download the film. Um, and you can you can do what is called a, a touch doc, which whereas you play the documentary and at any point in it you can touch a, 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 a timeline underneath and see a longer version of an interview, or you can go into the Labour Party manifesto, or you can check out the credentials of this person, or lots and lots of different things that we've <laughs> we've done a lot of research around it, and we thought maybe that's something that you could take to a crowdfunder. Because if there is already an audience for the film, um, there is a social network, a lot of social networking has been done about it. The, we know that there is a sort of core audience. So the idea to, if, if people were interested in us developing this further application, which would take, which maybe cost another 20, 30 grand on top of what we've already done, mm. then maybe we should see if there's a demand for it and then take it that way. So that's another thought beyond it's it's like beyond the film it's the and i think that's an interesting thing in the modern world as to what you're what you're raising the money for can you extend something i mean in general i think the very nature of how one raises money independently for films has a quite a lot of market testing involved in it mm. because you know it's generally not one financier it's several financiers so so you know at least two people have to like the film or see value in it. Plus, you need a sales agent who's going to say, well, it's worth this much in the market. Plus, you'll need a distributor who's going to say, well, there is an audience and I know how to get to it. So you've got quite a lot of elements who are sort of, in a way, rigorously kind of market testing the project along the way. And everybody will probably have notes on it as well. Mm. If, you know, when you put a script out there, the distributor will go, will have some feedback. The sales agent will probably have feedback. You know, and they'll have views on casting and, and all the other elements that kind of take a film to its optimum level. Um, you know, the fact that actually even after all that, some films fail to find their audiences is not necessarily a consequence of them not being good enough. Actually, mm. sometimes the, the, the difficulty of exhibition and distribution in this country, you know, are difficult because you're, 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 you're going up against you know, the, the studio monsters um, yeah. who have all the power and, and all the cinema screens. So, you know, there's, you know, however good we make the films and however rigorously they're tested, there's still, the di you know, it's still, still a very difficult thing to get a film out there and make it succeed. Yeah. You're going to be a monster, you may as well move to a complete genre and at least there's like, you need a really strong yes, poster, you can do something with the marketing to kind of just drive people to go and see it. I mean, that, that's what the studios do, half their films are rubbish, but they're very marketable. Uh, you know, they have big cast and they have a lot of money, so that's how they get away with it. But at least they've got a very clear hook yeah. always. I did once yeah. get a press release from someone saying, have you seen the unbelievably bad reviews for this R film? Um, is there a story in that? Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you do a story on yeah. how terrible this film, you know, has been, how awful it's been received? I said, yeah, I'm I mean, the good, the good thing is that even if it's difficult to see some films in the cinema, there are lots of other ways of seeing them now. And people. People will consume huge amounts of movies, you know, on TV or on, on online or DVD or whatever. You know, yeah. and the appetite for movies is huge. Yeah. You know. um, I want to just think uh, quickly about some of the other uh, ways to finance films that aren't necessarily represented on this panel. Um, obviously, going to a bank is uh, still a key, or has been. Key yeah. way to get money. It's not uh, very good. I don't, think, I, don't it's a, no, it's not. I don't think it's an option at the moment to go to a bank. To a bank. <laughs> <laughs> well, it bank. I think the term bank can be used for different things. I think the, hmm. the, the bank or gap financing hmm. is probably what you're, I think, what you're meaning, which is, yeah, bank's not very good. Most of them have got wise and got out. But there's a. Boutique finance. Yeah, it's like you're, the gap, which is you've managed, as a producer, <laughs> you've managed to get your. Uh, your sales in, you've got your distribution deal, maybe you've got film for me, you've got BFI, and there's what is called, it used to be called a gap. There's a little bit of space, maybe 15 to 20%. What you used to be able to do is you take the numbers that we would provide or another sales company to that financier and say, will you lend 
against these numbers, a certain percentage of you know whatever that gap is. Uh, that was a you know when I started and before that it was a great business because the market was such that the number our numbers you banks used to look at and go well even if the film is bad they'll still get ten or fifteen or twenty percent of these numbers. Whereas as I was saying now you know depending on the type of film if it's not very good. You know, actually, those numbers they're meaningless, basically, because the film isn't very good, and especially if it doesn't have either big cast or really clear genre, it becomes very tricky. But uh, we've done it on our last couple of films, yeah. I mean, it's not been easy, but you know, also what they need to see to do that is not only a piece of paper from us. More importantly, they need to see you've already been able to sell that film, uh, certainly in the UK and potentially one or two other international territories. So that's a really difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you've got to have a project that you can. We've done the last two films. We've been able to do that, but there's a lot of films we'll do that we would just say we can't do that. Doesn't mean we don't want to do the film, but we won't do gap financing because it's just not. Uh, it's not the type of film that lends for that. Mm -hmm.